Mm-hmm. Hello, greetings, everybody. My name is James. I'm from the internet. And today we are going to be talking about the coronavirus vaccine and how today, in the year 2021, big pharma corporations are the real death panels. Now, here in the United States of America, where we can't get more than like half of all people to wear a goddamn mask, the need for a stockpile of readily available vaccines, uh, combined with people to distribute them, is in great demand. We have tons of large pharma manufacturers here, and we have a president, actually two of them, who opted to invoke the Defense Production Act. And that would have allowed them to force every single pharma company in the country to mass produce the vaccine that either Pfizer and or Moderna have already developed. But of course, you know, the U.S. government didn't want to get into a large pitched battle with their corporate overlords. So we haven't done that. And as a result, there is not nearly enough of the vaccine either for us or, you know, the other roughly 8 billion people on the face of the planet who aren't in the United States of America. So today, I thought I would take a quick look at just how difficult it is to be a country and acquire a stockpile of this vaccine, especially if you are not a white first world industrialized nation. Held to ransom, Pfizer plays hardball in COVID-19 vaccine negotiations with Latin American countries. Now that the vaccine manufacturers have finished their first round of negotiations and sales with all the wealthy white countries, they're deciding to use that as a basis for negotiations with all of the poorer, browner countries, and they're really putting the thumbscrews to them. Pfizer has been accused of bullying Latin American governments during negotiations to acquire its COVID-19 vaccine. And the company has asked some countries to put up sovereign assets, such as embassy buildings and military bases, as a guarantee against the cost of any future legal cases, according to an investigation by the UK-based Bureau of Investigative Journalism. In the case of one Latin American country, demands made by the pharmaceutical giant led to a three-month delay in a vaccine deal being reached. For Argentina and Brazil, no national deals were agreed to at all with Pfizer. Any holdup in countries receiving vaccines can lead to more people contracting COVID-19 and potentially dying. Yeah, that's a very valid point, but the primary concern to any corporation is a fiduciary one to their shareholders in which they agree to maximize all potential returns on investment as their sole reason for existence. Corporations are the real death panels. Officials from Argentina and another Latin American country, which cannot be named as it has signed a confidentiality agreement with Pfizer, said the company's negotiators demanded more than the usual indemnity against civil claims filed by citizens who suffer serious adverse events after being inoculated. They said Pfizer also insisted the governments cover the potential cost of civil cases brought as a result of Pfizer's own acts of negligence, fraud, or malice. In Argentina and Brazil, Pfizer asked for sovereign assets to be put up as collateral for any future legal costs. Now, here in the United States, back when this all started, the former Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell pushed really, really hard to make sure that there were liability protections in place with all of these corporations before the vaccine saw mass distribution. Why? Because the corporations insisted upon it, and of course the U.S. government kowtowed to them, because corporate sponsorship is very important to all of the individuals in government who need those big fat checks every time they run a re-election campaign. And since these corporations got away with that crap so easily the first time, they decided to double down with all the poorer countries, using the cudgel of, if you don't agree to this, well then, it might be years before you see any vaccine. Rather compelling, wouldn't you agree? One government health official who was present in the unnamed country's negotiations described Pfizer's demands as high-level bullying and said that the government felt like it was being held to ransom in order to access life-saving vaccines. And this has been at the root of the argument against medicine for profit since day one. The threat of death is highly coercive Ergo, one cannot enter into a voluntary agreement when one is being coerced by the threat 
of death. But because corporations control both the means of production as well as the overall amount of money that politicians have to spend, well, they tend to keep getting away with this shit. Campaigners are already warning of a vaccine apartheid in which rich Western countries may be inoculated years before lower income regions. Now, legal experts have raised concerns that Pfizer's demands amount to an abuse of power. Quote, pharmaceutical companies shouldn't be using their power to limit life-saving vaccines in low and middle income countries. This seems to be exactly what they're doing. Pfizer, which has partnered with BioNTech, a German biotech company, to make the vaccine, has been in talks with more than 100 countries and international bodies and has supply agreements with nine countries in Latin America and the Caribbean, including Chile, Colombia, Costa Rica, Dominican Republic, Ecuador, Mexico, Panama, Peru, and Uruguay. The terms of those deals are unknown. Pfizer declined to comment on the allegations about its demands in the negotiations, citing ongoing negotiations which are private and confidential. In other words, they don't really want to have to deal with all your crap about asking them questions about their immoral business practices while they're busy, oh, I don't know, engaging in immoral business practices. They have better things to do than deal with you and your pesky ass questions. So sit down and let the corporation go do corporation stuff. Most governments are offering indemnity, exemption from legal liability to the vaccine manufacturers they are buying from. This means that a citizen who suffers an adverse event after being vaccinated can file a claim against the manufacturer and, if successful, the government would pay for the compensation. In some countries, people can also apply for compensation through specific structures without even having to go to court. This is fairly typical for vaccines administered in a pandemic. In many cases, adverse events are so rare they do not show up in clinical trials and only become apparent once hundreds of thousands of people have received the vaccine. Because manufacturers have developed vaccines quickly and because they protect everyone in society, governments often agree to cover the cost of compensation. However... The government officials from Argentina and the unnamed country who spoke to the Bureau said that Pfizer's demands went beyond those of other companies. This presents an additional burden for some because it means having to hire specialist lawyers and sometimes pass complex new legislation so manufacturers' liabilities can be waived. Pfizer has asked for an additional indemnity from civil cases, meaning that the company would not be held liable for rare adverse effects or for its own acts of negligence, fraud, or malice. This includes those linked to company practices, say, if Pfizer sent the wrong vaccine or made errors during manufacturing. Quote, some liability protection is warranted, but certainly not for fraud, gross negligence, mismanagement, or failure to follow good manufacturing practices. Companies have no right to ask for indemnity for these things. But that's where you're wrong, because we live in a capitalist world. And in a capitalist world, might is right. And at this moment... Pfizer is the mightiest of all. So you will bow down and kneel and accept their demands or your people will suffer and die. Corporations are the real death panels. Meanwhile, Pfizer and other manufacturers have received government funding to research and develop the vaccines and are now pushing the potential costs of adverse effects back onto those governments, including those in low and income countries. Pfizer's partner, BioNTech, was given $445 million by the German government to develop a vaccine, and the U.S. government agreed in July to pre order 100 million doses for nearly $2 billion before the vaccine had even entered phase three trials. Pfizer expects to make sales of $15 billion worth of vaccines in 2021. And now, because you know how I roll, I'm going to go from bad to worse and show you why Pfizer has this much leverage over this many countries. They pledged to donate rights to their COVID vaccine, then sold them to pharma. Last year, only four companies were making vaccines for the U.S. market, down from more than 20 in the 1970s. Oxford University surprised and pleased advocates of overhauling the vaccine business in April by promising to donate the rights to its promising coronavirus vaccine to any drug maker. 
The idea was to provide medicines preventing or treating COVID-19 at a low cost or free of charge, the British University said. That made sense to people seeking change. The coronavirus was raging. Many agreed that the traditional vaccine development, characterized by long lead times, manufacturing monopolies, and weak investment, was broken. Quote, we actually thought they were going to do that, said James Love, director of Knowledge Ecology International, a nonprofit that works to expand access to medical technologies, said of Oxford's pledge. Why wouldn't people agree to let everybody have access to the best vaccines possible? But a few weeks later, Oxford, urged on by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, reversed course. It signed an exclusive vaccine deal with AstraZeneca that gave the pharmaceutical giant sole rights and no guarantee of low prices. With the less publicized potential for Oxford to eventually make millions from the deal and win plenty of prestige. So as I stated before... There were a number of powerful and wealthy people along the timeline as all of this unfolded who could have very easily altered the trajectory of this. And right now, there could be hundreds of millions of doses of the vaccine being flown around the world and administered at light speed. But we opted not to do that. So the next time somebody tries to preach to you about how the industry is broken, please remind them it's not broken. It's working exactly the way it was intended, to maximize profit at the cost of human lives. Till next time, my name is James, I am from the internet, and I am out. Peace.